It's March 2016, and I'm sitting with uh, John Spencer of the New Horizons science team. Hi. And John's done a lot of work on Pluto, but uh, because I'm recording this for the Moon's MOOC, I'm going to ask John about Sharon. It's, it's a great moon. looks brilliant to me as a geologist, John. What are, what are the highlights of Sharon for you? Well, Sharon is very interesting because it's showing a um, quite varied geological history. Um, and Sharon is different from the moons of the giant planets, though it's similar in size and probably mostly in composition to several of them. It's mostly water ice, like some of the moons of Saturn and Uranus that are similar size. But unlike those, it has not been heated by um, tidal heating from the primary body because it's not orbiting a giant planet. So Sharon is giving us an idea of what worlds this size and this composition can do, can do on their own with purely internal heat from, that's left over from their formation or from their, uh, whatever radioactivity they have in their interior. And we see that moons uh, this size can actually do quite a lot on their own without the benefit of giant planet tidal heating. And so we're seeing quite varied landscapes on Sharon that show that there's been very interesting internal activity there. So it's got giant fracture systems which remind me of Ariel or, or Titania, uh, moons of Uranus, and also smooth-ish plains that have been mm -hmm. flooded by ammonia water melts. I mean, so, what, what, do you, yeah. what do you think? Well, yeah, it actually looks strikingly like Ariel, which is the moon of Uranus, uh, in a couple of ways. The older regions on, on Sharon are heavily broken up. It's, if you look at the stereo images, you see this network of enormous trenches, 10 kilometers deep, some of them, that break up the surface into these large polygons, but look a bit, little bit like some of the uh, fracturing that you see on Ariel, uh, where you have troughs and plateaus between them. And then we have a large area that's uh, been um, resurfaced. It's very smooth, it's very flat, it has, has lots of interesting small-scale surface textures on it. And uh, around the edges of this, or where it's lapping up against mountains, you see uh, what looks like a flow front that you've had some fairly viscous fluid that has flattened out over a large scale, but it can't, it's too viscous to lap up completely flat, flatly against its margins, against mountains that it's abutting. So you see flow fronts there where it's frozen before it's completely filled those spaces. And so, yeah, the viscosities you get from that look similar to what you get from similar looking features on a moon like Ariel and would then be uh, consistent with, uh, yeah, maybe not water ice at those kind of temperatures, which would be much too rigid, but water ice with a lot of impurities, impurities quite possibly ammonia, or uh, other possible uh, uh, intermixed uh, materials that would lower the viscosity to explain what we see there. So um, yeah, it, it really looks like we have cryovolcanic, very low temperature erupted material filling these large uh, low regions on Sharon. So it's another fascinating moon with great geologic activity to, to go with the best of the ones that Jupiter and the other giant planets have. Yes, absolutely. It's a unique place. Um, but we see similar processes to what seem to be happening on these other moons, which suggests that those processes can happen on those other moons independent of them having tidal heating. So that's a pretty interesting result. Yeah, that's great. John, thanks very much. You're welcome.